So uh, you've heard from uh, tons of other folks today, and we're going to finish it out uh, with Amber Vanderberg. Amber is from Tulsa, Oklahoma, actually, so homegrown. Uh, Amber is an award-winning international business person, coach, and speaker. Named for Tulsa's 40 under 40, Oklahoma's 30 under 30, and three-time SHRM award winner, Amber is a former HR director that has implemented best business practices in organizations small and large domestically and abroad with a passion for mobilizing ideas and equipping teams to exceed goals. Today, Amber's the founder of the Ninja Group that works with international teams in a ninja approach to collaboration, creativity, and captainship to, ca to catapult organizations' performance to awe-inspiring standards. I had an alliteration joke I needed to make. So, <laughs> uh, her talk today is cultivating a culture of creativity, collaboration, and captainship. High energy chat highlighting and how high energy chat highlighting how to effectively increase team performance, transform organizational cultures, and build meaningful legacies through collaborative ownership. With her talk today, we're going to learn to increase creativity through ownership, improve collaboration through teams, and captainship through character. Amber, uh, we're so excited to have you. Thank you for, for coming and talking. Please take it away. All right. Thank you so much for that introduction, Matt. Uh, we are going to start off. This is our final, um, final chat of the day. So I'm going to start off with a game. So you want to get close to your computer. I'm going to play you a couple of sounds, and I'm going to look to see who is going to be the first person who can identify the source of this sound. So where does the sound come from? All right. Okay, uh, it'll show up. Uh, and so it'll show up in the in the Slack. So I'm gonna watch to see, or I'm sorry, in the Twitch to see who comes up first, okay? Ready? Ah, all right, we got it. Lion King. All right, that, that was an easy one. Then. That was an easy one. All right, let's see here. All right, I got another one. Let's see. This one, I guess this might be a little bit more difficult. You got to be really fast here. Extra points if you can name the actual name of this song. Anyone know what it's actually called? Ah, uh, yes, it is from Star Wars. And it, yeah, it is called the Imperial March. Yeah, absolutely. All right, that was a good one. This one is a little bit harder, all right? So this one, I want you to name, yeah, name the source of where this song comes from. Canada. I thought someone might say Genovia. Um, if anyone watches The Princess Diaries. Yes, it is from Canada. Okay, you have, all right, let's see. I got I got two more here. We're, we're getting our brain going here. Got to be quick thinking. Okay, so for this next one, I want you to name the singer and the name of the song. All right, you're going to have to be quick. Ready? Okay. Oh, it gets kind of slow. Not bad. Not beat it. Not smooth criminal. It's criminal. Billie Jean. That's what it is. Oh, man. People knew it was Michael Jackson really quick. It is Billie Jean. Yeah, he starts off very similar in some of those. All right. Yes, it is Billie Jean. That was a lot of good guesses. Okay. All right. I got one more for you. This is in honor of the place that some of us have been missing so much. What is the source? Where is this from? The Office. Oh man, that was the quickest one that I saw. Yes, that was from The Office. Man, very good. See, <laughs> man, you guys were really good at pointing those out really quickly. Someone said Netflix, and I love that. Yes. Um, Man, Netflix is, has been the, um, what we've been doing in the, with this time. So yeah, LOL. I love that. Um, <laughs> 
See, it's important that we take the time to name, uh, to know the source um, of where where these came from. All right. So normally, whenever we hear that sound of the office, or normally when we hear that sound coming from the Lion King, uh, we generally recognize it by what we are seeing. But as we have more limitations, we uh, were able to see. I wasn't uh, showing you the visual. I was only the audio. So uh, in the same regard, a lot of things that we are doing today has additional limitations, and it's requiring us to use some other muscles that we have in a different way uh, to identify the source so that we can then take action. See, originally, whenever I was going to give this talk, uh, I had planned on telling you, you know, three months ago about how I, I'm with this company called Ninja Group, still am today. We work with high performing teams all over the world. I was going to tell you about this. A few months ago, I was going to tell you about uh, how I ha am a former HR director, how I quit my job in corporate America and moved to India and lived over there as the only American, the only female, the only Christian, and the only blonde academy football coach or soccer coach for Paris Saint-Germain and for Adidas Academies. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, opportunities for ownership within your um, within your processes and your methods and your projects and your roles. A few months ago, we would have really had a focus on that performance uh, feedback and that power of the performance feedback. A few months ago, we would have told you a little bit like what Alan talked about uh, within uh, performing apps and um, different ideas that we talked about in California with the Google development days. But you see the challenges that we faced a few months ago, the challenges that we had a few months ago with our organizations, the challenges that we had within our teams and within our projects are not the same challenges that we have today. See, the challenges that we're facing today are a little bit different uh, as we are all in isolation. Some of us are just now returning to work and emerging into a new workplace environment. And so today I'm going to give you a few different skills and different activities, different tools that you can add to your tool belt to improve your creativity, uh, to increase your collaboration, and to improve your captainship while you are at home and once we emerge into our teams once again, once we are able to go back to work. See, those challenges are a little bit different today than they were a few months ago. On the plus side, uh, see, we're not really worried about uh, Joe that's over in the corner that's eating his loud chips and his loud carrots and that's going around the office and talking to people and interrupting people and uh, kind of being a distraction. Joe isn't really a problem right now because we're at home, but we do have new challenges with the barking dog and with a crying baby and with, um, you know, the cat that keeps on coming in and out of the room. And so we have new challenges that we're facing today. The solutions that we had for engagement are a little bit different. The uh, appeal of a casual, cool jeans Friday is going to have a little bit different meaning today because a casual cool jeans Friday was casual, but today that's kind of dressed up. I mean, when was the last time that we put on something with a button? Um, and so the idea of, um, and so the ideas that we had to increase that engagement and that creativity is going to be a little bit different. Uh, the concepts and the pillars of these ideas are the same. So the same concepts that we had to building high performing teams are the same today that they were yesterday, but the application is going to be just a little bit different. We are going to talk about the opportunities for ownership within your team. There are four specific opportunities for ownership that you can have, and that's within your processes and your methods and your projects and your roles. And we believe that as you provide ownership to your team, once you give a little bit of ownership, there is an independence of thought that can lead to higher innovation. Now, in this COVID season, we have had, uh, kind of out of necessity, had to embrace more ownership within our teams. 
kind of difficult for a micromanager to manage your lunch hour if you're at home. And so uh, there is some ownership that has been provided to more and more teams. And within some teams, this has enforced more and more trust within their teams and organizations. While in others, if there is not that trust, not that um, precedent of ownership, it can induce a little bit more stress and anxiety and panic. So it isn't exactly something that's totally new. If you had a healthy dynamic, then you'll continue on with that, um, with more of a trusting relationship. If you had a little bit more of um, not a healthy dynamic, then that stress and that tension will still be there. So rather than it being a new trend, it's more of an expedited uh, trend, something that was already um, it was already going towards one one direction, and it's been expedited in some way uh, due to the pandemic. So that was a lot of information, and all of that is to say, how can we? In this time, in this new landscape, whether that be still being at home or returning to work, still practicing social distancing, how can we have a team dynamic that performs at a better level? In May of 2020, how can we build higher performing teams? See, I believe that... Uh, we know that humankind has had a series of revolutions all throughout time. About a hundred years ago, it was the industrial revolution that completely changed the way that we functioned. And about 40 years ago, it was the informational revolution that changed everything once again. The next revolution, many believe, is the innovation revolution. It's the imagination revolution. You see, innovation is how we stay competitive. It's how we stay relevant, especially in this time. It's how we stayed in business. And ownership can breed independent thought and ideas, and it is a vital part of the innovative process. Also, having new uh, restrictions, having uh, different limits can also help in the innovative process. But then there's also a question of where collaboration comes into uh, comes into play. See, in order to practice our innovation, it's important that we are exposed to new ideas, that we're exposed to new experiences, and that we have those conversations. And so I've had many organizations and many teams come to me and ask, Amber, are we going to go into a creative crisis? This is huge, especially uh, within the development community, especially once we are creating a new product and we are developing uh, the future of work. In this time of isolation, are we practicing, are we flexing our innovative muscle the same way or as strongly as we would whenever we are together in a room with other people? There are ways that we can and the reality is, is we won't be practicing it the same way, but there are ways that we can flex our innovative muscles while we are at home um, and while we are in isolation that can help us to create better product, that can uh, help us to improve our services and to truly flex our innovative muscle, both in, I, both in an isolated state and then also to collaborate together. There's a lot of information uh, to give you really to uh, point out that this is the time that we can truly be innovative to catapult our organizations forward. So this is one activity that I use within several teams. I've used it uh, quite a bit over the last few weeks, working with different organizations and different teams to help us brainstorm new ideas. So I'm going to give you just a moment to grab a piece of paper if you don't have one already. Uh, so grab a piece of paper and we are going to have the most ultimate contest ever. See who can be the ultimate dog drawer. I've been collecting. I've been collecting. So take a moment to uh, get a piece of paper. Let me know uh, once you're ready. 
Okay, looks like some people are ready. All right, you're gonna take your piece of paper and you're going to turn it landscape wise and then draw three lines um, vertically and then one line horizontally. That'll give you eight boxes. Okay, that'll give you eight boxes. Uh, what I am going to do is you're going to, uh, I'm going to give you 15 seconds per box. Okay, you're really gonna be working your innovative muscle here, all right? Take out a pen or a writing utensil, and I'm going to give you 15 seconds to draw a dog. Whenever I say next, you will go to the next box and draw a different picture of a dog. Total, you will have eight different pictures of, um, of a dog, okay, at that time, all right? So 15 seconds per box, I will let you know. Ready, set. Next, next dog. Oh, oh, okay, I won't do that. Next. Next, you're almost halfway there. Next. Next. You got three more. Next. Next. Final one. And stop. Stop. Pencils down. Pencils down. We're done. We're done. All right. Um, all right. All right. Who was able to draw eight different types of dogs? Breaking on the chat here. All right. I'm seeing some good stuff. Definitely different. <laughs> Was it easier at the beginning or towards the end? Sometimes it's easier for the beginning. For me, it's definitely harder towards the end. I have never heard of anyone writing the word out dog. So you get points for creativity on that. The beginning was definitely easier. A lot of times as we are thinking of different ideas, you think there's a lot of different dogs out there, but um, we'll find that in our mind, there's really only two or three that are the forefront of our mind. And as we keep on going, oftentimes there's not six or seven or eight that we're thinking of at one time. So this is really a great activity to provide a time crunch on. Um, they thought out of the box later. Yeah, absolutely. This is a good thing to put a time crunch on that absolutely puts a, a bit of, uh, puts our create, creative muscle to flex. So now I'm gonna do a progression on this. We made a dog or we made eight different dogs. I want you to flip your paper over on the other side. And this time we're gonna cater it towards web development a little bit more. All right, so uh, flip your paper on the other side, make eight boxes once again. 
And this time, I want you to design an app. Actually, let me do a different one. I want you to design, do a web design for this dog named Rover. Okay. All right. You're going to have 15 seconds once again. All right. So I want you to design a different web design for each in each and every single box. All right. So design it differently on what's going to be on there. Okay. All right. Ready, set, go. Next. 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 Next, you're halfway there. We're almost halfway there. Next. You guys almost got it. Next. Next, got two more. Final one. Three, two, one, stop. Put your pencils down, put your pencils down or your pens down. Okay, okay. <laughs> so the first one was, it was a dog, but this one was a little bit more catered towards what we were doing. Um, Actually checking in more now. Okay, all right, I'm glad. Yeah, the time limits can be, all right, you were using a crown, so you get some points for that. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> So these time limits, again, are really powerful that you can use within your teams to come up with ideas like that. Notice that I at first I said an app and then I changed to a different web design. A lot of times you can use different prompts within your team to come up with different ideas. Uh, I've used this in different teams uh, with prompts such as if we have a very complex problem, uh, a very complex challenge, we'll use this for different troubleshooting to develop new product, to use different design. I did this with an open source team uh, a few months ago, they were um, using Typo3, and so we did uh, different prompts within that. And so what you can do remotely is take these ideas here and post them within your Slack channels, or uh, Slack channels, honestly, is one of the best, is to post them on that, and then you can start threads to share those different ideas. This is really powerful, especially if you have different dynamics within your team. Uh, so if you have some people that are very outspoken and some that uh, aren't as, a, as outspoken because all of the ideas get equal merit um, on that since they're on the exact same uh, platform. I think you're on the iPad. Mm, okay, this was a lot harder. Yeah, so this was... This was a lot, um, this was a very difficult one. Um, and as you are with your team, you can use different prompts that can, um, that can really help you to flex your innovative muscle. I use this on a personal scale as well. So I've done this with, with groups where we point
point out different uh, bucket list items. Uh, we'll use this actually in our family to point out different family vacations. Uh, so point out eight different things and then we'll find the similarities um, that go within those. So this is a one tool that you can use to flex your innovative muscle individually. But as we said, what you can do in isolation, it's important that we also take that time to collaborate. Um, so a lot of teams are using Microsoft Teams, Google Hangouts, Zoom. Um, so they're using different uh, collaboration tools within that. And so these are different things you can post within your team to help spark those ideas. Um, so it's really powerful if the whole team does it all at once, and then you can uh, share those ideas and build off of them in that regard. Now, collaboration, a lot of times, uh, especially in this season, is coming together specifically for, um, you know, for that purpose to solve one specific problem. But we find um, through, through research of collaboration that so much powerful conversation comes in the before and after in that meeting, whenever it happens in person, in those casual conversations that, were ha that are happening. And so I found that a lot of teams are creating virtual water coolers or virtual places for very quick check-ins, uh, maybe not for the purpose of uh, professional, professional uh, problem solving, but really for that relational development. And within that relational development, it's really, really uh, important because we can collaborate more quickly and we can collaborate more clearly if we uh, have a better relationship amongst one another. I love that the logo just said design. That is awesome. Um, <laughs> you guys have gotten really creative in your <laughs> uh, in in your activity. Yeah, eight box is a really powerful activity that you can use for different brainstorming. Now, other ideas that we use is rather than just an eight box, then I'll put a 90 second timeline on it. And so then it gives limitless amount of how many you can do. So that's when we go from quantity of ideas. And then we can uh, take that quantity of ideas and then move the conversation into quality of ideas as well. Whenever I work with a team that is all together in one place, we can also use post-it notes. And so then you can look and see which post-it notes um, that the team has created uh, overlap with one another. And that's a really good snapshot on the values and the priorities that lie within the team. Now, while you are uh, going through these activities and after you have done your brainstorming, uh, it's really important that you then take the time to define the scope. Now. Oftentimes, whenever we talk about scope, we're talking about the scope within the projects. Today, I want to talk a little bit more about the scope of ownership and the scope of collaboration. So that means within this project, what aspects of the project are your responsibility, right? So what um, are within your scope of ownership? Do you have full, full ownership of? And then there are other aspects of the project that might not be just one person's uh, area of ownership, but actually two or three. And so it's um, a good way to clarify who is in charge of, you know, the front end part, the back end part, who, who is in charge, um, maybe not in charge, but who has ownership of these different aspects of a project. In a few teams that I've worked with, we actually have come in, I did this with an executive leadership team, uh, with a organization, we had about 20 people and there was some miscommunication or maybe lack of clarification on who had ownership mm -hmm. of what. And so we came in and we had a list of different facets of the project or different facets of the team. And whenever that was said, um, so for example, someone would say, um, the, the, homepage web design. And so then everyone would point and say, this is the person that we would come to if we have questions for that. And that can provide a lot of clarity for, okay, we all have some clarity on who has ownership of this. And then there are some aspects where we had no idea who to point to. We had no idea who we could go to uh, if we had questions about this aspect within a project. And so this was a great way to bring about that conversation 
um, so that we could provide clarity of who had different scopes of ownership within our projects. So, um, so those are some different tools that you can use to improve the dynamic and to improve the clarity uh, within your team so you can perform at a higher level. Now, we've talked about creativity. Um, we've done a few different activities and uh, I've given you a couple different tools. And of course, it's important that we also have collaboration, right? So our most innovative self comes with moments of isolation partnered with moments of collaboration. But it's also important that we take the time to have um, to have these moments of captainship. So this is the third piece of a high performing team, which is truly having um, having a captain within your team. Now, I have a background in athletics and a background in sports. And so having a team captain is a common phrase that um, that I use within my teams, whether that be on an athletic scale or in a business setting as well. But see, captains truly begin by leading themselves. It's something that we've had a lot of practice in in the last couple of months of leading ourselves to get out of bed at a reasonable hour and, um, and you know, take, take care of ourselves in, within that way. And so it's important that we take the time to lead ourselves first while no one is watching. Which right now, there isn't really anyone around to watch. So it's important that we take the time to lead ourselves and then realize why we are leading ourselves. Uh, so realize what what is the motivator, what is the driver behind that. If you have a person on your team that is very driven only for the purposes of promotion, then once you reach that peak, then that motivator and that driver is gone. And so it's important that we uh, really do a self-evaluation and then also as we're leading our teams, uh, have an evaluation of what is the purpose, uh, what is the driver behind uh, this motivation. I see right now a lot of teams are experiencing different shakeups in the dynamics um, and different shakeups within the organizational dynamics as well. And so it's important that we take the time to lead ourselves and then also lead others. Now, leading others, especially in this time, comes down to two very important proactive conversations that I want you to have with your team today. The first is to talk to your team about, um, reach out and ask about the type of relationship that um, type of relationship that you want to have within this working dynamic. So there are some people that have been within a team that are super extroverted in the office that might be uh, um, a little bit more introverted in the or at the home, right? Or people that didn't really need a lot of checking in whenever they they were in the office, but they're really struggling at home, and so they want to be checked in a little bit more. And so it's important that we take the time to have these conversations, uh, especially in this time, in this very unique time, and say, hey, how can I best support you? You know, how, um, how, what, what type of relationship um, can, can I have with you to, you know, be, be the most beneficial, right? So be genuine and be authentic in those conversations to truly help your team um, and help your teammates to, that sense of togetherness and connectedness to, again, perform at that truly higher level. So that's the first question, is to have a frank conversation about the uh, dynamic and the relationship that you have uh, within your team. The second is to have a conversation about the types of communication that is preferred within your team. Now, we're a couple months into COVID, so I'm uh, so more than likely, you've already had some sort of conversation about the types of communication that you're using. Uh, but right now, especially with a lack of face-to-face, -face, there is more and more possibility of a miscommunication within, within our teams. And especially while our relationships are very separated right now, and then our communication methods are, um, are changing quickly also, uh, there is a level of grace of, okay, we're all figuring this out, but don't let that level of grace be an excuse to not have proactive conversations of what action could be taken whenever there is miscommunication. So uh, have a very proactive conversation and say, hey, 
at some point in this project, there's going to be some miscommunication. There's going to be stress. I might fail you at some point. So while our emotions are low now, let's have a conversation about how we want to address um how we want to address this whenever it comes up. And so then you can normalize conflict and be prepared to have a conversation and improve uh, for in the future. And these conversations really only take a few minutes, but they are very powerful because they set an expectation and they lay a foundation for how you can um, improve your dynamic as a team. Uh, yeah, so they can, they can totally improve that dynamic. Now, Finally, it's important to know that all of this is, all of these tools are very, very important that we use um, to improve our dynamic, but it really comes down to having a positive uh, and authentic relationship with our team members. So don't forget to uh, reach out to your team members and be intentional. So those conversations aren't going to happen by chance in the hallway um, because we're at home. And so it's important that we are intentional to reach out to your team members, whether that be through text or through phone call uh, to, or through email, uh, to have a conversation and to build those relationships. It might be easy to say, well, we're, we're all busy. We're all working on different things. But since we are not at the office, if we are not intentional, then that relationship it might not feel like it's dying, but it's not growing, right? And so if it's not growing, then um, then that can put a strain um, on, on that uh, on that whenever we come back to the office. So it's really important that we take that time to be intentional. See, we've made it through this really big COVID season and we've been surviving, but now it's time for us to take the time to truly thrive within this time. And like our very first activity of identifying the source it's important that we also take the time to identify the source of what is making our teams great. Um, we might not have all of the resources that we are used to in the same way that we did not have visual. Uh, you only had audio in those original challenges. But the raw material for future greatness is our current goodness. So what are we doing um, what do we do good to get through this COVID season right now that we can use and harness as a pillar to help us be great uh, in the future? And it is of my opinion and my belief that it's, that this is through powerful creativity, right? The next revolution is an innovation revolution. Uh, this is the time to be creative and uh, to truly pave the way of the future. It's through effective collaboration. We have brilliant people. Um, we have brilliant people within our teams uh, and within our organizations. If we set our, if we uh, lay a framework and lay a foundation for effective communication and collaboration within our teams, we can bring all of that genius together um, to create a product that is even better than we imagined, right? If you can achieve your dreams all on your own, probably not dreaming big enough. So it's important to include others in those plans. And it's also important that we take the time to, um, the third pillar is through inspiring captainship. So we have people that are um, leading the way and helping us to pave the way of the future. And if we do these three things, we can truly perform at a higher level. And we can not only make it through this COVID season, this interesting time and through this next year and what this next year is going to bring, but we can truly perform at a higher level today, tomorrow, and to build a better tomorrow in the future. So thank you so much. I hope that you um, enjoyed those uh, activities. I use those quite a bit within Teams, some very similar to it, um, all throughout different teams and organizations to build that innovative muscle. So uh, reach out to me if you want any other resources um, on how to use that within your organizations today. I think. Uh, yeah, no, we're good. Thank you so much. Um, okay, uh, if anyone has any questions, please reach out. But I mean, this was a pretty interactive talk, so I don't know how specifically that's going to be. So um, yeah, uh, everyone on Twitch or on to on Slack, uh, please reach out with questions real quick and we'll walk through those.
Okay, we got our first one. Uh, what other activities do you do? What other activities do I do? Oh man, um, I have like I have a catalog of books uh, of of activities. Um, so these these ones today were more for creativity, um, but I have truly a catalog. Um, I brought up the post-it note one. I also do some that are are of a time crunch. Um, there are also activities for improved communication and collaboration as well. So that the entire process of the beginning of the idea to execution of the idea, uh, there, I have different activities to, yeah, exercise that muscle, those muscles. Well, they had, I think this, they, they might be elaborating on it a little bit, but do you have any activities or methods for encouraging inclusion or diversity on a team? Oh, that is a great question. Um, yes, yes, I do. Um, so I'm, let me, let me think of like a good one. Um, so I do a different activity that talks about different personalities in diversity and, uh, bringing in different education, uh, educational backgrounds as well. And so, um, and, and so a lot of times whenever I do diversity and inclusion, uh, I take at it from the different secondary diversion, uh, diversity that can be brought to a team. And generally looking at secondary diversity pr first, uh, it can lead into a powerful conversation about primary diversity. Um, and so looking, looking at the secondary aspects such as, um, such as personality uh, and different skills uh, primarily first and then lead it into uh, primary diversity. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I'd be more than happy. Yeah. If you reach out, um, I can give you, I have uh, about 10 or 12 different activities that we do related to that. Rocking. No, that, that was perfect. That covered it. Um, okay. Uh, how do you help coworkers who are down, stuck at home? So kind of what do you do for remote workers and the same thing? Yeah, yeah. Um, man, this is the time to check in for sure. Um, everyone is handling this situation a little bit differently. Um, and so first ask, <laughs> how are you doing? Uh, is honestly the first place I would start. Um, a few of my team members, I have sent care packages. Uh, some I just call to check in. They just want to talk. That's totally fine. Um, so I would make that personal to the actual person. Um, some are wanting experiences. And so, um, you all know, send them different, you know, things that are going on TV. Hey, here's a new concert or something you can watch. So it, it really depends on the person and getting to know them and then catering the way that you are helping them through the season in a way that's personal to them. Rocking. Uh, okay. We've got, let's see, uh, here we go. Have you worked with any virtual office organizations, either all or mostly remote? Uh, and if so, are there activities for building more collaborative communication and production? Yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> so I have worked with virtual teams and uh, hybrid virtual teams. And um, yeah, so a lot of the, the activities that we did today, as I said, rather than coming into an office, we'll post them on uh, interactive platforms uh, such as Slack or uh, Microsoft Teams, and then uh, we'll have the conversation that way um, as far as I generating ideas um, in that regard. As far as communication goes, um, I do virtual training as well within those virtual teams. And generally we will speak on, okay, what are the situations where um, an, an email is more appropriate than a phone call or a text, or, you know, you look at different mediums of communication, which generally what I find in, uh, virtual teams is not as, um, maybe intentional as, uh, in-person teams. And so there's a lot of training on what types of platforms are more appropriate for certain situations that will allow for communication to be more clear. That's great. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. This one, this one skipped through. 
Do you have any suggestions what to do when team members do not want to join creative sessions because they think they can't be creative? I'll just force them. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but throw a pencil in their hand. No. <laughs> um, you know, even whenever I started this session, uh, did you realize at the beginning with our very first activity that that was a creative activity? Uh, oftentimes, uh, I find that creative activities maybe jump in a few steps already in. And so maybe taking baby steps to increase that confidence and that ability of, okay, this is something very simple. Name this tune. Or uh, rather than saying Star Wars, I'll just play a scene from something and then, hey, imagine what's going on here. That's a very simple thing. Uh, that can build a little bit of confidence. And so rather than starting off big in a large creative um, idea generating activity, I'll start off small to build up, up that confidence. And again, start exercising that baby muscle over and over and over again. Um, that And that generally, uh, a lot of times people don't want to participate in those creative uh, activities because there is a lack of confidence. So if I start off small, then I can build that confidence um, to increase engagement and participation in those activities. Excellent. Thank you so much. I think that answered it. And I think that uh, that will be it uh, on the questions. Again, uh, Amber, thank you so much for today. This has been fantastic. And we really appreciate you closing out the conference. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It was a joy. Oh, sorry. I should, uh, if people want to get in contact with you after this, where is a good place to find you? Oh, yeah. Um, so you can follow me on LinkedIn, uh, Amber Vandenberg, nice and easy. Uh, Berg like a burger, B-E-R-G. And then you can also find me on Twitter. So it's my last name and my first name, at Vanderberg Amber.